Welcome back to Climate Concepts. In our last video, The Climate Bathtub, we explored the concept of why we call it a climate emergency and what level of action needs to be taken to avoid our planet from becoming an unpleasant place to live. So today, we're going to use the carbon walk concept to look at the questions of how much are our greenhouse gas emissions and what contributes to them. So let's put what we've learned so far into context and take a look at a global thermometer. Here on this thermometer, we can see that the pre-industrial average of plus zero degrees C is at the bottom. And then where we are at the moment in 2020 is around plus one degrees C. We're currently on track for around plus three degrees C warming or even higher if we follow the policies in place. And as we recall from the carbon bathtub um, video, this gives us a risk of tipping points. So we need to limit warming to a safe level of plus one and a half degrees C, and we urgently need to reduce our CO2 emissions. We need to reduce this by about half by 2030 and to net zero by 2050 if we're to meet the Paris Climate Agreement goal of plus one and a half degrees C. So what do we need to change to achieve this? Well, let's just think about what our carbon emission levels actually are. And we often describe these in terms of a carbon footprint. So you might travel through your day emitting various amounts of carbon. At the end of the day, that adds up to a certain weight of CO2. So we sometimes describe CO2 emissions in terms of the weight produced. And a useful metaphor here is to think about that weight in kilogram bags of sugar. So what is our daily carbon footprint in bags of sugar? Let's have a look at that. Let's start the day, we've got our trolley, and as we work through the day, we add various amounts of sugar to the trolley. And by the end of the day, we've got quite a big pile of bags that adds up to a daily average of around 30 kilograms of CO2. That equates to an annual average carbon footprint of around 10.5 uh, tonnes of CO2. Now that's quite a lot, but where does it all come from? Well, let's do a carbon walk to see where that 30 kilograms of CO2 comes from. So imagine a typical day. You wake up in the morning, you switch on the light, and you get out of bed to a warm room. Generating the energy to heat and light your room would probably have involved burning some fossil fuel and emitted some CO2. Next, you might take a shower. Again, heating the water takes energy and emits CO2. And now you get dressed. The clothes you put on will have required energy to make them, and so will have some CO2 emissions associated with them. The more often you buy new clothes, the greater this contribution to your carbon footprint will be. The next thing you might do is to have breakfast, and perhaps a cup of coffee and a bowl of cereal. Here again, energy is used to heat the water for the coffee, and energy has also been used to produce and transport the coffee powder and the cereal, resulting in further CO2 emissions. After breakfast, you might decide to go to the shops, and maybe you take the car. The fuel you burn during your journey emits CO2, and also the car itself required energy to build it, and so it has an associated level of CO2 emissions for its manufacture. Once you get to the shops, you'll enjoy a warm and well-lit environment. And again, this requires energy to maintain and hence produces CO2. And maybe you treat yourself, you buy a new pair of shoes and a new watch. And as with anything else that's manufactured, these also have associated CO2 emissions. Now you might stop by and have a bite of lunch, uh, maybe at the taco shop. And as with your breakfast, there's also carbon emissions for processing the ingredients that you choose to have. And, you know, if you have something with beef in, then you'll need to add some of the methane produced by the cow. Having finished your shopping, you then drive home. And as before, the fuel you use adds to your carbon emissions. If it's a cool evening and it's getting dark, you might turn on the lights and uh, put the heating on. And again, this adds to your CO2 emissions. And then you realise, oh, it's your turn to walk the dog. Surely walking the dog can't add to your CO2 emissions. 
Actually, it does. Keeping a pet requires extra food and other provisions, all of which require energy to make them. So they all have associated carbon emissions. After your walk, you settle down for a tasty dinner. And as with your other meals, there will be CO2 emissions associated with preparing and transporting the food. And now it's time to relax and watch TV or play that PS game with your friends. Both of these require energy to run them. And also, as with everything else that you own, they have emissions associated with their manufacture. And finally, it's time for bed. So many things contribute to our carbon footprint and there are lots of opportunities for change. So let's pause for a moment and think about what we've learned. In this video, we asked ourselves two questions. How much are our greenhouse gas emissions and what contributes to them? When I first saw my carbon footprint represented in bags of sugar, I was really quite surprised. Do we really produce that much carbon every day? Imagine if you had to carry it around with you. Doing a carbon walk can help you to visualise where in your day you're contributing to your carbon footprint. And it helps you to think about ways in which you can make changes to reduce that. So finally, I'd like to leave you with a question to think about. What kinds of changes do we need to make to reduce the global carbon footprint? In our next video, System and Self will use that concept to try and understand the sorts of changes we need to make as individuals and how those fit into the wider systems picture. Thank you for listening. I hope you found that video useful. If you'd like to know more about climate concepts, please visit our website.